Hello, this is Michelle with Artful Possibilities. I'm going to be um, walking you through a step-by-step -step tutorial for beginners. Um, love you to the moon and back. Valentine's Day is coming as of the recording of this design and I thought this would be a lot of fun. So I'm going to be using several brushes today. I'm going to be using a large flat, about a one inch, about a half inch flat, three eighths inch flat, and I will also be using a liner brush and um, maybe a small round, um, but I'll be using a liner brush, something like this, any kind of fine brush um, in case we decide that we're going to do any lettering. So what I'm going to do is start with my large brush. My paints, by the way, are, um, I use mostly Liquitex Basics acrylics, but um, you can use whatever you might have and whatever colors come close. I'm using Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Doxazine Purple, um, Mars Black, Titanium White, and Quinacridone Magenta. So I'm going to have some fun mixing all these colors on this palette. And um, I've wet my brush and touched it my, to my paper towel. And now we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to grab some phthalo blue and a little bit of white. I'm going to start swishing the white into the blue. In the upper left, I want to add a little bit of black and blend it a little bit into the blue. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some Dioxazine Purple. And just keep grabbing. Now I did not wash my brush in between. Just having some fun with the colors. I'm going to grab a little bit of Quinacridone Magenta. And then some white. Now before I go much further with this, I'm going to start um, pouncing up at the top pretty soon with a paper towel. But as I come down, I want to get lighter and lighter. So I still have some blue in that brush and I'm just going to keep adding white. And my motion of my brush is like a overlapping X's, okay, one over the other. Okay, so now I'm going to put my brush down for a moment. I have a wet paper towel that I have wet and squeezed out. And now I'm going to just kind of scrunch it up in my hand. And I'm going to start pouncing straight up and down. I want to do this before it dries. And make some texture there. You can turn it different ways and also change how it's folded so you don't get a pattern. I'm just going to dip in some of those colors and add a little bit more to the sky as we go. I'm going to grab some phthalo blue up in here. I want the upper part of the sky to be pretty dark. So I'm going to come in with some black. All right. It's kind of fun. You can just keep dipping, pouncing adding different colors. Just don't make the top part of the sky light. We want it to stay darker. So I'm grabbing some of the purple and some of the magenta. Just kind of making that night sky nice and, and dark up there. Use your favorite out of the colors and um, just kind of pounce and see what you get and see what you like. look a little stormy up there and get a little bit more of the phthalo blue. Now this might have to be dried a bit in order for us to go in and put more on there but I'm just pouncing straight up and down to try not to disturb the bottom 
the bottom layer that's trying to dry. Okay, so again, as we come down, just going to keep adding a little more white and let that get lighter down there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the paper towel and I'm going to pounce this. Let the colors mingle a little bit. The great thing about this one is that you can do this with younger children. As long as it's okay for them to get a little messy, just make sure you're using non-toxic paints and um, an area where uh, they won't ruin their surroundings because acrylic paints are water-based. Sometimes beginners think that means that they can just always clean up with soap and water, but really it's only when they're wet that they can clean up with soap and water. Once they're dry, they're permanent. So we definitely want to remember that with the little ones. Okay, I think I want, mm, I'm going to keep it lighter over there. I think I like it just like it is. Um, might add just a hair more black up here. I definitely want the black to just kind of soften into those other colors. Okay, so I'm just going to blow dry this real quick. Put my brush in the water. Okay, here we go. All right, so now that that's dry, we're going to create a moon. And I'm going to go ahead and put it over here in the upper left. Now, I just have a bowl because I want to show you that you can use whatever you have around the house. Um, you can use chalk. You can use a regular pencil even, but just keep in mind that we're going to be painting the moon white. And we don't want the pencil to, um, to show after, so... If you do have a white chalk or a pencil, go ahead and use that. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to go back and take that large flat brush, which I'm rinsing out. Touch it on my paper towel. And I'm going to grab a bunch of white. And I'm going to just base coat that moon. I have a little thick piece of paint there. All right. So I'm just going to base coat that moon with white. Let me turn this around. It's okay for it to stay a little bit streaky inside because we're going to be adding some texture to the moon. You'll be able to use whatever colors you want in there from the color palette that we have. So I'm just trying to go ahead and get a nice smooth edge. All right. So we're going to let that dry a bit. Looks like I splashed a little out there. It will probably just end up being a star later, but for now I'll just take it off. Okay, I'm going to put my brush back in the water. 
And while that's drying, I'm going to create a couple of clouds out here. So again, I'm just going to take that same paper towel and I'm going to fold it over my finger. I'm going to take a little bit of white and right up in through here, I want to make a cloud. So I'm just going to um, dip in my white, put it on my palette, just kind of pounce a little. And I'm going to rub a little bit. Kind of like that one, just the way it is. Then I think I'll put some more down in here. And keep this pretty simple. Just kind of rub it a little bit. Don't rub so hard that you start lifting your paint. Um, hopefully you've dried it pretty well and it's um, adhered well enough that you can just come in and rub just a little. So I'm kind of pouncing and rubbing. Okay. And I just want it to fade off at the bottom. And let's see, there's a lighter area in here. So while it's that light, I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a cloud. Okay. And right in through here, I'm going to add another one. So I'm just going to pounce, pounce, pounce. I'm going to make my finger um, go up and down so that I don't have just a perfect line. We don't want these to look really symmetrical. Okay, so that's good. As it dries, your white is actually going to just dry and kind of fade into the background. So you can come in and add more. This is a whimsical painting, so you can just kind of have fun. You don't have to worry about it looking perfect. Okay, so I really like this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same here and up at the top. I'm going to make it brighter by adding a little more white. So just a little bit of rubbing and a little bit of pouncing. Okay, I like that a lot. So now this one up here needs to be brighter. I'm just going to keep playing with that until I get it the way I like it. Now as this white dries, we'll just keep going back in and adding more. All right. And I think I'll just put a little bit out in here, like it's coming around the other side. Okay. We can also have um, some clouds in front of the moon after, um, but first we have to go in and add some color to our moon. You see how this is already fading in and it's just going to keep doing that but as that background dries the drier it is the more the more vibrant the white will be that we come in and add Good, looking good. Okay. I can't stop. It's so much fun. I say, okay, I'm done, but then I see it fading. And so I want to just grab more white and come back in and just keep on laying it in there. Now I got a little overzealous there and added quite a bit. But you can just take another clean area. I mean, this stained, but it doesn't have fresh paint right there. And I'm just going to pounce a little bit. Okay, so I really am going to leave that alone for a moment. And let's see. 
I'm going to um, just smooth out some of this white. It stayed a little bit thick there. So I'm smooth that out a bit. And I'm just going to blow dry that so we can put some more white on it. Alright, so the moon, the base coat of the moon is fairly dry, so I'm going to continue um, on the moon really by um, pouncing my paper towel with some white. Now this paper towel is a bit dirty, and I'm okay with that. It's letting some of those other colors um, come into the moon. Uh, if you don't care for that, you can get a clean one. Or you can just turn it. Okay, here's where there was some blue. So I'm just going to grab some of that. Maybe some of that blue will come in. I'm just lightly rubbing the white paint and then patting. I'm liking the way that's looking already. Trying to stay inside the lines. Okay. Um, you could wear a, rub a pair of rubber gloves to do this too, especially if you have fancy nails or anything um, that you don't want the acrylic paint to stick to. So that would work. I'm going to um, make my moon lighter here at the bottom. Okay. I went out of the moon a little bit. I'm going to come in with a clean brush and just kind of wipe some of that away. There we go. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and I'd like a little bit of purple in my moon and a little bit of magenta. So I'm going to pounce it together here on my palette with paper towel. And I'm just going to put some of that in down here where my magenta clouds are. Okay, I am going to need another paper towel. I'm going to wet the paper towel in my water, squeeze it out, and come back to my moon with a clean wet towel and just pounce straight up and down. Now I'm going to um, also dip in some white and I'm just going to pounce my white on top of my uh, magenta and purple. Okay, I'm really, really liking that. Now you can put as much color in that moon as you'd like. I do want to keep it fairly bright, but it's kind of fun to add some of the color in it also. So let's see, how about a little bit of phthalo blue? Just kind of pounce it around. And I'm going to get a little bit more of the magenta. I really like that a lot. Just kind of let it mingle a little bit. <clears throat> All 
worry. Now I want the moon to be a little bit brighter down at the bottom. So I'm going to take some white and come back in. Okay, I like that a lot. I need to let that moon set up now for a little bit. I am going to pounce back over that cloud that's on the left. and Maybe just a little bit more over here. So my fingers pointing um, toward the top of the cloud and the cleaner end of the paper towel is down toward the bottom. So these could all use a little bit more brightening up. So I'm just going to tip my finger in a little bit of the white and come in and add some more, leaving it mostly toward the top and just kind of softening it as I come down on the cloud. And I want it to just fade into the bottom of the cloud. I'm not going to add other colors in the cloud purposely. I'm just going to let the colors of the sky just kind of um, show through. So here, um, I really don't want a cloud that low. My paper towel had slipped, so I was going to go with it, but I really don't want one that low because we're going to have some grasses down there. Okay. So you can keep on adding to your white as this project dries. Okay, I really like that right here. So up in here, I think I'll do the same thing where I just kind of bring the cloud up a little higher up the side of the canvas. All right, super cute. So up in here, it's going to need a little bit more white after. Okay. So while that moon is drying, I'm going to go ahead and create a silhouette of some grasses down here at the bottom. So I am going to start with a number six brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of water and a little bit of paint. And I'm just going to pull a little more water. I'll start back up at the top. Now, some people like to start their grasses at the top and work their way down. Others like to start at the bottom. Um, so I would say practice that and then just go with what you like the best. I'm going to grab a liner. Okay, I just have like a number two script liner. I wet it. I take the puddle of paint, put it near my a puddle of water, sorry, and put it near my uh, puddle of paint and I just kind of roll. And I'm going to go back in. And what I'm going to do is just put some grasses down here at the bottom. Alright, so I was letting this um, design kind of um, develop in front of you and I didn't call out all the brushes so um, I'll go back and I'll put uh, some text in for you um, add besides the the flat brushes and the round you're going to want a liner you could also try a fan brush so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of flicking some grasses here from the bottom up and I'm going to have them a little bit taller on the outside and then down through the middle. I'm just going to have them a little bit shorter. In case you want to write Love You to the Moon and Back, you'll have room. Okay, so this is so pretty. Just pull it up. 
Now, and I kind of flick, and as I get to the end of the stroke, I lift up on the pressure on the brush so that um, my brush comes to a really fine point at the end of that stroke. Now, the thing is that that takes a little bit of practice. Okay, so really I recommend trying that. You can practice on paper, but paper is very porous and very absorbent, so sometimes it's hard to get a nice smooth stroke, but you could try it maybe on um, like a coated paper plate or if you have palette paper. Um, I have a disposable palette here and that has a nice coating and you can practice. So again, make some go maybe up and over like that. And grasses crisscross, okay? So don't be afraid to let some go in front of the other. Okay, and we're just going to come in like this. And this is going to be pretty really just as is once you're done. It's very, very simple. I love this. Playing with a liner brush, honestly, once you uh, get some practice in with that, I'm going to dip in a little more water here and water some more down. Once you practice and you get used to it, um, you'll really enjoy it, I think. Now I'm using a very light touch, and I do want to mention that I'm not bearing down on the bristles. Okay, I'm staying up on the tip, and I'm just using the very tip of those bristles for this particular, uh, for the grass. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of frame, frame the painting by bringing a couple more higher. Okay, and then over here now, those got a little, little thick because I was using a thicker brush. Sometimes it's also easier to turn your painting upside down, and no, it's not cheating. It's helping, helping yourself to have your hand in the best spot for you so you can complete that brush stroke. Now see here, I ran out of water. I didn't have quite enough water in my brush. So I'm going to come in and just make that grass a little thicker than I wanted. We could also take it off and erase it. Now, what I don't want to do is leave all this spacing down in here. I want the grass to be thicker there where it grows out of the ground. So I'm just going to take uh, any flat brush that you have, um, even the one inch would work, but this is a half inch one. And I'm just going to dip in my black and I'm just going to put it here and just kind of flick a little bit just to make the ground solid. And you can turn your brush sideways too if you do have to bring some of those grasses up a little bit higher. Okay, and that will just kind of make the grass look like it's actually in the ground growing up out of the ground by having that base in there. Okay. All right, I like that like that. So if you were laying down on the ground and you could see the grass and then up beyond it, you'd see clouds and the moon. It looks good. Now for the moon, you could go back around with some white paint and just make it nice and crisp all around. Or you could make it um, kind of hazy around the moon by taking your brush dipping it in your white paint and wiping a lot of it off and coming back in with more of a dry brush and just kind of extend your moon and rub the brush back and forth and it will give you a little bit of a haziness around that moon. So when you dip in your white, wipe it on your palette and then touch it on your paper towel so that when you come around here you're not having so much paint that you make a big white line because that's not what we want. We just want to put a little bit of a haze around the moon. So you could do that, like I say, or you can just go back and make the edge more crisp. It's really up to you. Um, I'm going to come in 
and straighten out some of those edges. But my challenge is that the bottom of this is wet and I'm getting my elbow and everything in it. So let's go ahead and just take a moment to blow dry this again. All right, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to come in and take a little bit of white and just go ahead now and I am going to touch the edges of that moon and make it brighter. I'm still going to leave that little bit of haze around it. Haze is just kind of drying into the background. I'm just going to have to bring some onto the front. We're almost done. Let's go ahead and brighten that moon up over here a little bit. I'm just using titanium white and I'm letting that color just kind of dry brush out into the moon and fade softly. And we can keep coming in with purple and blue, magenta. You can keep playing with those colors and make it however you want. I do like it a little bit brighter white there around the edge. more. Okay, let's fluff it down. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is bring this cloud on the left a little bit onto the moon. So I'm going to get some white on my paper towel and I'm going to pounce some white in there. And then um, I'm going to grab Let's see, let's try just a little bit of dioxazine purple, and I'm just going to do put a little bit of that into the cloud. Remember, we can put it in and then come in and lighten it. I'm just going to let that cloud just fade. I'm going to grab a little white, come in and dab some white. Alright, and I'm going to do a little bit also on this side, this cloud right here. I'm going to let it come in front of the moon also. I'm going to make it more uh, bright white. Now the moon has some nice color right there, so if we just leave that cloud bright white, I think that will work really well. And what we could do is go in and glaze a little bit of purple behind it or whatever color we'd like. Um, but I think, I think I really like that a lot like that. What do you think? Make that white a little bit thicker. You can have another little bit of cloud here. All right. Now I want this to fade at the bottom. I don't want the cloud to just be a dark line at the bottom. I want it to fade out. Okay. Okay. I like the way that is looking. I want to add a little bit more white up here to this cloud on the left.
use quite a bit of white in these clouds. It will just add some dimension also. All right. Okay, so if you need to pop any of the clouds, what you can do is put a little darker color behind them. So I'm just going to show you that really quick. If I wanted to pop that one, I would just take my round brush, wet it. I would take a tiny bit of maybe purple, wipe it on my palette a little, and just come in and put just the tiniest bit in there. And that's going to help bring the cloud forward. So you can see down in the deepest, the deepest areas what that does. Okay, I'm going to grab a little of the quinacridone magenta and put some of that in there also. Now what I don't want is a harsh line like is happening right there. So I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to take some of that away and come back in on the other side and just kind of soften that. Now we can also soften by coming in and just lightly dabbing a little bit of white there in the front also. So the intention for that is just to put a little deeper color behind the cloud to help bring it forward. So you can do that here and there or just in the areas that you want to look even um, more, you know, have them pop a lot more. You can just come in like this, put a little bit of color, just a little bit, and just kind of let it soften out. And you'll see wherever you put it, I'm going to get magenta for this one, it adds just a little a little bit of dimension. That's a lot of color right there. I'm going to rinse my brush and come back in and just kind of soften that with some water. Soften that. So let's turn that back around. My little dog, they always know um, when to bark when you're when you don't want them to. <laughs> All right. Okay. You see how adding that little bit of darker color in the back does help pop the clouds. So you can go ahead and do that wherever you'd like. And what I'm going to do next is just splatter a little bit of stars up in the sky. Now you can splatter. There's a dot there that I want to cover. You can splatter or you could place them strategically wherever you want. Okay, so here's here's you know, if you just want to come in and put them in. Usually if I do it with a brush like this, I don't want the stars to look like perfect polka dots. So I don't use a stylus or a pencil or the handle of my brush. I use the tip of the brush. I think we'll do that tonight instead of um, splattering. And another thing you can do is water down some white and come in and Here's a white spot, so I'm going to take advantage of that. And I'm just going to put it in and kind of let let it bleed out. And then um, as that dries, I'll come into the center and put a darker, a darker dot. So we want the stars to all be up, up high, especially up in the darkest part of the sky. Um, you'll, it'll show quite a bit if you put it up where the sky is dark. Okay. And if you want to add some spatter, splatter, spatter, you're going to water down some paint and use a round brush and you're just going to come in. I like that a lot. I'm going to put in some intentional stars that are a little bit bigger here and there. Right there I got a big smudge. Let's see what's going on over here. 
clean brush. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of magenta and just go back in over here. And something must have splashed there before. Okay. You could put in some darker clouds like that too if you wanted. I think I'll leave that there. I like that. Okay. So that's really all you need to do for this. What I'm going to do is let it dry and um, then I will varnish it with my favorite gloss varnish and then I'm going to paint the edges black. So take a look, step back, take a look and see if there's anywhere else you want to add some more grasses um, or stars, whatever. Anyway, that is uh, finished for the purposes of this tutorial. Let's call this one done. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day.